Hello, welcome to the studio. In actual fact, this week I haven't been doing much work in the print studio and so I haven't been filming anything. So I thought what I might do uh, this week is just do a kind of review of my year and talk about what's worked and what hasn't worked, what I've discovered, what I hope to do more of next year. Um, so here goes. Um, well, starting back in January, um, I, well, my artwork life was kind of dominated by events actually so I was preparing for a uh, paper ink print event in London um, and also for print fest in the Lake District uh, which is all printmakers really nice event to go to and then uh, straight after that I was doing North Somerset Arts Week so I had lots of work to prepare for that um, all of those things and um, they worked and they didn't work so some went absolutely brilliantly and I don't know why and some didn't go very well and I don't know why. <laughs> uh, we are living through a, a, a cost of living crisis at the moment so that could have had something to do with it but that doesn't explain why some of these things worked really well. Um, I always like to go out and see people in real life anyway and talk to people and I made a decision last year to try and only do kind of niche events I suppose so things that um, uh, either very print makey um, like print fest or local where people are interested in local artists um, or just sort of specialist works on paper type things and I think generally speaking that is a good thing to carry on doing so those things work for me I was able to they tend to attract people that really love what I do um, rather than sort of competing with lots of other artists that are doing completely different things to me, perhaps very large, perhaps very bright, I tend to get lost in, in the mix. Um, and they're, they're also going to attract a completely different audience and different type of art lover. So um, generally speaking that well, well, and I will keep doing those kind of quite niche events, I think, um, for next year. And I'm certainly going to be applying for Print Fest next year, which is, a, like I say, is a really lovely one to do and kind of quite specialist, um, but it's in a beautiful area of, of the country. And um, so it's kind of a joy to do anyway. Um, and then also during that time, I was preparing for a residency. Um, so I had almost a month in a place called the Vestibule, which is in Bristol. And it was a, a sort of very, an enormous, really very high ceilinged grand uh, room in the council house, um, or what's now called City Hall in Bristol. And um, they give it to artists to either do exhibitions or work in. And, and I had been given some money, a bursary money, to uh, make larger work. So I'd spent the money, I bought some really enormous boards, I'd been preparing lots of monoprints on tissue paper, um, and painting onto the boards as well as a sort of underlayer. Um, in the garden and in my shed studio as best I could before I moved into this uh, really large space. Uh, and there's quite a lot of videos actually from that time on um, YouTube if you want to have a look at what I was doing around that time. So I was really pivoting my work from almost exclusively work on paper to, um, well, to something completely different, but trying to bring along the the marks from printmaking and the gestures from hand printmaking um, and the landscape subject as well and trying to then make that larger, make it more overt, um, perhaps brighter as well. Um, so when you're working bigger you really do have to make some just bigger statements really. Um, and I found myself kind of naturally going with bigger gestures and, and more colour and things like that. Um, and I did pretty much complete a body of work during that time. Um, and I've continued to do that kind of work. So I'm calling it, it's mixed media essentially. So I'm collaging my print onto board um, along with paint, acrylic paint and some drawing as well. So um, I think it's working quite well at the moment. Um, I'm continuing to do that. So I obviously I only had that space for a month and um, I moved in for a couple of months afterwards to a temporary studio and I've now finally found a very small studio in Bristol for the next six months. So I'm hoping it might even last longer than that. But um, I'm really enjoying the freedom and the it's just been a, quite a revelation actually having a larger space being able to move around walk back from work look at lots of pieces of work all together 
Um, and I realized that that was probably a part of my art life that was missing. So um, I'm definitely carrying on with that. And I really like the mixture of printmaking and mixed media and painting. Um, I think it's working quite well. So that was a really nice discovery. And it's kind of means that I'm kind of doing two different types of work in parallel at the moment. I'm doing my work on paper, a lot of which you see on these videos, and I'm also doing mixed media work. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a mix at the moment. Um, alongside that, I've been selling work online quite well. So that's something that's worked really well this year. Been trying to make it easy for people to buy online and that they can see everything available. Um, and it's, it's kind of a boring admin job, but actually it does need to be done um, to make sure that everything is you know, photographed and up on the website and able to be bought and checking that the things that have gone to galleries aren't on there and all this kind of just admin stuff. And you know, it takes up a chunk of time, but this year it's paid off and I have actually had quite a few people buying artwork online. And I think lockdown really helped with that in some ways is that people were much more willing to buy things without seeing them in real life. Um, so that's kind of helped. And then also me actually sorting myself out and um, you know, my online, life and world out has really helped. Um, so definitely worth doing. And I was always the kind of person that said, no, 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 I don't sell anything online. Nobody ever buys from me online. And that has been proved wrong this year. So um, I do recommend that to people. Um, but it does involve, you know, regularly photographing your work, um, uploading it, organizing the files, um, editing all the photographs, putting them onto your online shop. And I actually use Artwork Archive, which is really is an inventory software. You pay a little bit each month for it. It's actually an American thing. Um, but it's really great because it has the back end of it, which is your inventory. It's just sort of every piece you've ever made and where it is and all that kind of stuff and where it's been. And then the front end of it, you can use as a shop. So they don't have payment links, but you can just click on I'd like to purchase or I'd like to inquire and it just comes through as an email. That has made life so much easier for me. So when I upload it onto there, I can say, yes, I want to make this public. It's in my shop. So I do recommend Artwork Archive um, as an easy way to organize yourself and to have a shop. And you can embed that shop into a website, by the way. So that makes it a lot easier as well. So that's been a real, real revelation actually this year. I finally got some online sales. So. I'm glad about that. Um, and then during the summer, that was kind of dominated by um, making a new video. Uh, so I've made a video course, uh, Landscape Impressions, um, which is going a lot more into depth into um, sort of planned intentional printmaking and working, working from photos, working from sketches, how you translate that into a hand printed landscape. Um, so I was filming that, I was editing it, um, and then putting it out there into the world. And this year, I've kind of changed the way I do things. People didn't seem to be taking up the support element of my courses. So I, I offered a sort of Facebook page where people could interact and put their work up um, and talk to me and I put extra videos up and things. But n people weren't really, there was a few people interacting with that, but not that many. So I decided to cut that whole element out um, just release the courses as they are, as an evergreen product, I believe they call it. So it's just out there all the time. You can buy any time you like, uh, but without the support element. Um, so I have had less sales from that, um, but it also means it's less pressurized. So I don't have these sort of launch periods where, you know, I'm marketing heavily. Um, so I'm hoping that throughout the year, the sales will kind of even out. Um, and it's less pressure on me. So um, so that's a new way of me putting my teaching out there. Um, and then I've also been teaching for Spike Print Studio, which is my local print studio, where normally people go in real life to use the printing presses, but they're also offering online courses now. And I've been doing some online courses, how to print at home for them. Um, I was really terrified to be perfectly honest when I first started, I wasn't really sure about about doing them. Um, it's quite scary to do them on your own online. Um, uh, but actually, they have worked really well. And um, people seem to really enjoy them. It's great if you can't get to a print studio, or you want to just try and learn the basics of hand printing at home. 
um, without having to join a studio or do induction courses or any of that kind of stuff. You can still kind of learn the basics. Um, and my the second course I did for them was dry point at home, so learning how to dry point um, without a press, which uh, was also really nice. So that's, um, I've realized that I actually quite enjoy teaching and uh, I think people actually enjoyed the courses. So I'm gonna do those courses again in the new year. So January is gonna see me doing landscape monoprint at home. And then February is gonna be dry point at home again online you get five sessions online which is um and they're recorded so if you can't actually make each one you can just watch the recording oh i've got a siren going there um so yeah so that's been a real revelation actually for me um being able to teach and then throughout quite a few months of the year i was doing my 100 day project now I won't lie, I found it a lot harder this time round. It was much more of a slog, I missed quite a lot more days, so it went on for longer, so it was kind of between February and June. And I did 100 days of monoprint surface pattern. And yeah, the idea being was that I would kind of uh, do lots of stamps and stenciling and things like that. What actually happened was I just got really obsessed with one particular stamp, and I, which was circles, and I, most of the time was doing circles <laughs> in various colors and different ways um, and if you I've got again I've got some videos on this of what I produced um, and I really enjoyed it I enjoyed just doing doing that um, and so I've now got lots of surface pattern I'm not quite sure what to do with them. I'm hoping next year that to scan all of those in and see if I can manipulate them and make them into um, something that might be licensable or, or to get out there um, one thing I really liked actually was not feeling the pressure to make a piece of art in its own right and I got so used to doing that obviously normally but what I discovered was I can just make an image and the image is fine it was only going on to Instagram anyway the whole idea of surface pattern is it is an image not a thing or an object um, that was really nice. So I was really just playing around with putting things on top of each other, um, creating an image from the back of the piece that I'd made, um, uh, ripping through, juxtaposing things, and just creating a great image. Um, so that was really good, and I highly recommend the 100 Day Project. Um, I'm saying this in hindsight, you know, when I was doing it, I, I did find it quite difficult. Um, it's just doing, if you've never heard of it before, it's just doing one little thing each day and so I recommend probably you know five to ten minutes because otherwise you won't do it um, and what I usually end up what I've done for the last two years actually is really every two or three days do a sort of longer patch of time making something getting into the flow and then I would post on Instagram uh, like each day um, or I would play around with the things I'd made and you know Put them together and um, put them on top of each other or something like that to create a new image so that was the creativity each day rather than the actual making um, so yeah i highly recommend it you do learn things about yourself you learn about how you make why you make what you make um, probably the kind of person you are so yeah uh, definitely worth it and i've now got you know, a whole load of surface pattern that I can do something with. I'm sure there's something I can do with it. If nothing else, it can be collage. Um, so next year, what's gonna happen? Um, I'm not entirely sure yet. Probably less events, less in real life events. I'm trying to stay away from things that are not my niche and not spending too much time and energy in going to things that are just too broad for my work. Um, but on the flip side, I'm going to be working with some new galleries and I'm looking for new galleries to sell the mixed media larger work that I've got. Um, so that is going to start happening in the new year um, and I'm actively looking for galleries now. Um, and that's really exciting actually for me. Um, I really want to see this new work going out into the world and from what I've heard so far, people are liking it, people are enjoying it. So I think that's going to be a really good way to go for me this year while continuing the online sales for the works on paper unframed. Um, that's a really nice way to sell because the posting is really easy for people. People can just go and frame up the piece when they've got it um, and it works really well. Um, 
I'm in my new studio in Jamaica Street Studios in Bristol, which I'm really loving. Um, so I'm going to continue making lots more new work, hopefully, um, well into the 2024 um, mixed media work, as well as working in my shed studio, this place, um, to make works on paper and continuing to make those series because those kind of inform the mixed media pieces and vice versa. So um, I don't want to do just one or the other, actually. It's, it's nice to do both kind of at the same time in parallel. Um, and I probably will do the 100 day project again this year. Um, I'll have to take a deep breath before I do it, but I definitely will. So um, that's my year um, and the beginning of next year. So uh, what have I learned this year? Goodness, um, to do a little each day, um, to allow the different ways of work to inform each other to that actually that I really want a big bigger space and more space and um, that it changes the way you work you know moving physically moving the body around the studio um, the different gestures that you make um, the being able to stand back the kind of freedom the feeling of freedom that comes with a larger space um, so that's probably my big learning from from this year um, and also that I quite like teaching as well um, and that I hopefully I'm going to do more of that for next year. So this might be my last one before Christmas 2023 so um, if it is have a great Christmas and a great beginning to 2024.